So, so I'll start. Um, hello everyone, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Uh, this competition is co-located uh, with ICAP 2021 and IGCAD 2021. Uh, we are very pleased to have this opportunity to present our uh, results. Um, I'm Yuxuan He from Four Paradigm Company. So um, our competition is about dynamic job shop scheduling. Uh, so job shop scheduling is a key problem uh, in many real world manufacturing system and have many applications. In this competition, we have extended it to dynamic job shop scheduling problem, short name as DJSSP. Um, with commonly encountered stochastic events such as random job arrival, unintended machine breakdowns, and due time changing, etc., all of which happen very frequently in real world manufacturing settings, as we have encountered. And our intention for this competition is to promote participants to solve the issue with automatic reinforcement learning approach. And um, so we have listed our motivations in summary in uh, three bullet points. Um, and for our competitions, uh, the participants are asked to propose automatic solutions that can effectively and efficiently uh, uh, train agents for a given set of DGSSP environment. And so uh, the solution should be designed to with an environment as input, automatically construct the state and the action space, the shape rewards, uh, automatically select the RL algorithms and its hyperparameters and to train agents. And we also listed um, some, uh, some questions for participants to consider to answer such as um, how to automatically choose the RL algorithms or how to automatically generate the uh, network architectures. And um, now let's turn into the uh, competition setup. So this competition is set up into three phases. Two phases are designed to help participants to develop their solutions. And uh, the last phase, last phase is for organizers to check the uh, answer correctness. Uh, in summary, we have, you, uh, we have created 13 environments in total. Uh, well, three, three are public, uh, three are public, five for the feedback phase and five for private phase. We have also provided uh, two baseline, two, two starting, uh, in the starting kit, we have prepare, uh, provided two baseline to the uh, users. Uh, one is reinforcement learning based uh, solution and one is rule based solution because we are interested to see the uh, difference or how the users, how the participants would choose uh, between those two uh, approaches. And for evaluation, we, uh, the, the, the evaluation is based on the average long-term returns on all environments given the time budget. And for computing resources, we used a workstation with six GPU core, uh, 56 gigabyte RAM and one key 80 GPU. So um, to be continued, uh, in this competition, um, the machines are the major resource, uh, are the major resource. In our setting, one machine can only process one operation um, at one time. And job um, consists of a sequence of operations, each should be processed on a specific set of machines and take a certain, a certain time. Um, the image to the right, the, the last image um, on the right uh, shows, shows two different type of jobs. Um, the rectangle denotes different operations and the color indicates the type of machines that can uh, process the co corresponding operation. And for instance, a type A job comprises three operations, A1, A2, and A3, whereas A1 and A3 can be processed by one type of machines while A2 needs another, another policy. And uh, uh, policy in DJSSP uh, assigns specific job to an available machine at a specific 
point of time. The middle figure uh, shown on the right gives an example schedule that is generated by a policy. So there are uh, three machines uh, being considered, among which M1 and M2 are of one type, and M3 is the other. So two job belonging to the two job belonging to the two type two job types uh, in the in in the bottom uh, in the bottom figure uh, so uh, needs need process. And then the type B job arrives slightly later than the type A ones, and the policy assigns the type A job to M1 at time zero and the type B job to M2 at time one. Then at time uh, eight, the it's simultaneous, simultaneous assign them to M to M3 and M1 respectively. So uh, yeah, and then for matrix in this challenge, two matrix uh, are being considered uh, in evaluation, namely the mix span and uh, the mix span and pending time violation. And um, uh, yeah, the explanation are shown on the PowerPoint. Uh, we also considered uh, there are also stochastic events and diversity being considered, such as um, number and type of machines, number and arrival of jobs, and occurrence of machines, uh, machine breakdowns. And um, now let's show the computation results. So the computation runs from April 21st to July 23rd, and there are there were in total of 95 participants, um, 168 submissions. So the top play, top five place winner score are shown on the PowerPoint. Um, uh, although, so the um, so given uh, uh, so our competition would offer prize and awards awards to top five place participants given that they agreed to open source their solution. So although the uh, top one place winner won't be able to open source their solution due to software requirements, um, we are very pleased to invite the team to present their solutions um, in, a, in a short while. So overall, we have noticed that um, the top solutions for these computations are mostly uh, rule-based, um, use rule-based um, approach um, or the operation research approach over the RL approach. So we have uh, uh, so we have analyzed that and we thought that it's because um, the uh, so so since that we are running a series of uh, computations, we plan to increase the task difficulties uh, in future and make it more aligned with uh, real world scenarios in our future computations so that um, maybe the RL approach would uh, be more in favor uh, in the future future settings. So again, uh, a big thanks to all the organizer, advisor, uh, the competition committee, and all participants. And now um, I would uh, move on to the video recording from the uh, top solution team, AI Horizon. Uh, so, um, so I'll stop sharing this screen and uh, uh, share another talk. Jennifer, when you're sharing, make sure to click on the share sound option for the video as well. Okay. Uh, can you hear? Can you can can you, can you see the new share share screen? Yep. yep. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, this short presentation is about. Um, what we've been doing in the AI Horizons team for the GGSSP uh, challenge, okay? And we've been working on this uh, together with the, the CP Optimizer development team. So uh, basically, the, the, the main problem here in, in, the, in the challenge is a fairly classical scheduling problem uh, that can be efficiently solved by uh, using just state-of-the-art optimization techniques so the baseline problem is a flexible job shop uh, problem. And then we use the CP optimizer to, to solve it. 
So the problem itself, as, as you all probably know, if you have been working on this challenge, is a flexible job shop scheduling problem. So you have a set of jobs. Each job is a sequence of operation. And then each job can uh, may require some type of machine. And there is a limited number of machines of, of each type. Okay. So there are precedence constraints between the operation of the job. Um, and the objective is to, 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 to minimize a mix of make span and a sort of a tardiness cost on the, on, the, on the time lags between operations. So uh, if you have um, two operations um, with a particular time lag between, between the, the consecutive operations, okay, then the cost may depend on the violation of some maximal delays on, on this uh, between the operation. And then once you have uh, uh, exceeded this maximal delays and there is a linear cost, okay, between the, the, the operation. And those objective is to minimize the weighted sum of, this, of these two components, okay? So we have been using, as I said, CP optimizer. If you don't know CP optimizer, so CP optimizer is an optimization engine for modeling and solving uh, combinatorial optimization problems, and particularly uh, scheduling problems. It provides uh, mathematical concepts like interval variables and function to, to easily model this type of problem, in particular scheduling problems. And it implements a robust and efficient automatic search, which is an exact algorithm, so it can provide optimality proofs. Uh, <clears throat> if you are interested and if you do not know CP Optimizer, then I, I show here an interesting reference that gives an overview of CP Optimizer. Okay, so for instance, if on, on, on this particular problem, the Python model of with using CP optimizer looks like this. I will not enter into the details. Of course, it is not the actual model because the actual model is a little bit more complex because due to the dynamicity of the problem, you have some well some data that enters in and then the, the problem can change when it is uh, rescheduled. But basically, it's very simple. It's like here, you have a set of decision variable for each operations. We have, a, we have some decision variable for the lags between consecutive operations in a job. And then the problem, as you see, is to minimize uh, the sum of uh, the first line here, which is uh, the max span, the max end times, and the sum of the delays of the, of the lags between the operations. And then there are some precedence constraints between the operations and some uh, and, then, and the fact that the, each operation use some type of machine, okay? Here, in fact, we kind of simplify the problem because machine of the given type, they are equivalent in this, in this challenge. So they can be modeled as a discrete resource. And then we can perform machine allocation only in the end as post-processing. Okay, now, of course, uh, we have to handle here due to the dynamicity of the problem, some uncertainties. And then what we have been doing is simply to reschedule in each time an uncertainty occurs. In the challenge, the only uh, sources of uncertainty are machine breakdowns. And in fact, it's quite rare events, okay? Because uh, during a session, uh, well, well, what we noticed is that most of the time there is only one machine breakdown. So there is only one real source of uncertainty that justify to, to, to reschedule. So what we are doing is that at the initial solution is computed at t equals zero with all the jobs, the jobs that are available at t equals zero, but also the jobs that we know will be available later. So it's easy to, it's easy to integrate in the model some minimal start time for these jobs. And then we compute a new solution and recompute a new solution each time an uncertainty event like a machine breakdown occurs. Okay, and each time we run the, the engine, the optimization engine, we use time limit, okay, which is something like it's about 10 seconds, but it is quite enough for the engine to compute as optimal solutions or very, very good solutions. And there is one additional thing that we, we noticed by analyzing the, the training instances is that the machine breakdowns that can be, well, let's say, well estimated in advance because they concern in general the same type of machine. And they, the, their date of the machine breakdown is, is not very variable, okay? So we can easily guess at the beginning, roughly, this type of mach one machine or this type of machine will become down, and we know pretty well the date when it will be down, okay? So when we compute the schedule, we, we, try, we take into account the occurrence of, of, of this 
type of estimated machine breakdown in the model. Okay, so and that basically it's it's very simple. Uh, of course, an interest of the approach is that we can compute optimal solution. We have ideas of optimal solution when we when, when compute them, so we can easily once we have run the session on a particular instance on an environment, uh, we we could compute easily a lower bound of a solution which we would have would we know everything that will happen. That's what we call an, an omniscient uh, solution. So after looking backward, we reschedule, we recompute an optimal schedule, say, and as maybe we cannot prove the optimality of the schedule, we compute a lower bound. But this give, give us a lower bound of on the best thing we could achieve if we would know everything. And as you can notice, the gap here is very, very small Okay, on, at least on this published public benchmark, because we could not do this on, on the real competition benchmark, benchmarks. But this shows that the, the solutions found by, by our approach are really, really um, let's say, quasi optimal. Okay. Okay. So in fact, this is this was actually on, on, on the competition, but but uh, SIP optimizer uh, is used in real world industrial application on similar problems. Okay with the dynamicity and uh, a good example is, is, is in the semiconductor industry with a major uh, manufacturer in, in Europe. Uh, and it's used every day okay, to, to, to schedule and reschedule the, the, the Fab Lab. Uh, and in this application, reschedule occurs every five minutes. There are many, many sources of uncertainties, not, not like in, on, in the challenge here, but there are new jobs appearing, there are uncertain activity durations, and of course there are machine breakdowns or maintenance. Uh, and the under scale, no, underlying scaling problem is, is larger and, and much more complex. Okay, but I won't describe here this uh, complete application, but just to say that, well, for CP optimizer at least, uh, working on, on, on this competition was something uh, uh, pretty easy and the model is pretty simple. Okay, that's mostly what I wanted to do about uh, about the approach. Thank you. I, um, so that's all for uh, for our competition.